<laughs> Source code for application is used by TSTT, um, daily reports. So I'm going to do the technical stuff. Source code and um, dumps of databases that shows password for the cache account. So, source code. Um, what source code will TFT? Will TFTT have that is very, very vulnerable besides be online or. <laughs> um, no wanting to jump ahead too much, but what the CEO was saying, you know, she was trying to say that a lot of this code, you know, is. is like a, from our old code base, you know, so it's not necessarily what they use now. That is old code that they retired and they just had some certain, you know, so. Okay, cool. You <laughs> may not have to worry too much about it, but again, it's just us. It might just be a snapshot of what these people putting out there. They probably have, yeah. they never know, yeah, you know, but. Yeah, if, if you know, we're coming back to you saying what could be vulnerable. I mean, I mean, we know they all have they all have this internal system where, well, be mobile stop having flagship stores. They only use third parties now, and any third parties usually have to log in and register SIM cards and all them kind of thing because they don't have any like be mobile store anymore. Everybody is a uh, basically a third party client, I guess. Mm -hmm. So there, that software that links all of those third party clients inside. Of course, there'll be usernames and passwords inside there, and there will be some sort of source code that they would have to code to link the databases or that kind of thing. So if that linked, if that leaked, maybe somebody who is um, determined enough to go in probably, it probably coded in Java and and um, dig through that. Yeah, and I mean, it's probably not just that because then the whole build pay system was done for a couple of weeks or so. Yeah, was, correct, was yeah. build pay, yeah, so it, it could be that, yeah. it could be the other app they launched the other day where you could go in and do soft pay bills. So it could be, you know, it could be all that. Yeah. It could be there into some of the internal stuff. You know, some of them have customizations that you build up on, you know, so it could be all, could be all of that. Could be, could be. All right, and the next one is dumps of databases that show password used for their cashier accounts. I believe those cashier accounts will probably be the people who, the third parties who, um, yeah. Who get to log in and whatnot. What so again? Oh, nah, nah, I ain't seen too much of that. Here's a, watch this one. Scan documents that include IDs for customers, payment receipts, customer invoices with amounts, dates, and other details. So like knowing somebody's um how much money they owe TSTT and when they pay and all that. Um, if you want to, you could build a profile on somebody of somebody who is poor and probably you could attack them or you could fish them better or some kind of thing like that. Because phishing sophisticated, eh? There's no who they send any emails to. People who are in debt and... Yeah, uh, who's kind of kinda desperate, you know, look at yeah, really need yeah. money. Of course, yeah. So like, okay, so let me say for example, somebody like me, who does always pile extra on the bill, so it always have a negative on my arm. Um, anytime I get a bill and I do say a negative sign, something yeah. wrong. I just always need to have a little pad in there just in case something go wrong. But anytime yeah. people who in six months are debt hunting, um, the phone and getting cut and whatnot, if I were a fishing scam artist, I would filter those people out and be like, okay, these are the most liable emails that, that will click on the link if you if you send the phishing attack. So that that could be used. Any other way you think that could get used? Yeah, and I mean, they could probably look for email, provide people with emails that don't necessarily have good email filtering. So people, you know, some people, are, most people on Gmail, um, well, if I have some Yahoo but, mail still out there. And yeah, so you could probably look at mail. <laughs> oh, you know what they could do with email? You know what they could do with emails? If you have an email address that is there, they could take that email address and cross reference it with another hacked set of um data and see if they could get a hash password. And if yeah. they get a the hash password, they will they could reasonably guess that you probably use the same password and go and try to use that password on on yeah. any other account that you have because more than likely you reuse your password. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's possible. And more than likely one. you don't have two factor authentication. You don't have one two factor, yes, correct. Yeah. yeah so yeah, this yeah, is yeah. a good time again to go and turn it on all, all your factors. So yes. even if they have your password, you know you have an extra layer of protection there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right, so let me get to the um the part of the document where okay, last week we went through the database dumps and the emails and whatnot. Um here's one um clip. Oh yeah, we went through this last week. We saw all of these did we did I share these images when we were doing I don't Chivan? think so. I don't think so. So No 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 wait that that point. Okay. All right, so this is the first time. So this is a database uh this is a CSV file basically, um, with phone numbers, names, IDs, national IDs and whatnot. And um, based on what I saw, you just run some SQL commands, open that up. Big up to my, my class in school who are teaching SQL right now. And they actually got to see that SQL could be applied in real life by bad people. All right. So the hacker group Ransom EXX, they posted, they have seen this page as we promised and we're proud to share it with you. Shame on them. So they shared this page. But this is not the actual data set. This is just a sample that they showed because yeah. they were saying that they would release it, right? So when they released it, he found out all of the data dumps and all that, right? So this is an example of the SQL commands that they ran where insert into credentials values here or da, 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 some... So this this is this is TSTD's SQL? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, <I'm saying> yes. <laughs> so they just store in the password in plain text. Plain text, yeah, plain text. Look at right yeah. You look at the you see it as plain text, yeah. You right. win. You win. Okay. Fully, yeah. It's plain text characters. Look, voucher, password, 50 character set. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plain text. So they have all the records there and. Um, this one is a screenshot of a database file for the Starlight group. Yeah. That was the pharmacies on them. And, well, then they have this actual spreadsheet. Look at this spreadsheet here. Yeah, this is this. Yeah, scroll up there. Let me just think, skim through this. This is enough information for mass identity theft and fraud. What we haven't okay. seen so far, the writing of this is switch credentials, clients, the data items of the Oracle database with customer names. Mm -hmm. Source code seems to be code from the internal applications, including billing applications, scripts that perform automated tasks, web page code, some credentials. Embedded in some documents. In some documents. As you see here. <laughs> this red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, IP addresses for all of the places. And um, the, the names so, are the servers. Server, server names, yeah. Yeah, NSX, yeah. All these server names and everything there. So all them IP addresses be in there. This is the one. Credentials. Oh my A goodness. Notepad. <laughs> A notepad oh. text file. With the, with the, the root, root pass. Oh no. Oh, Only of all, those of you listening on the podcast, we are literally looking at a text file with passwords. One yeah. for the root, the root FTP. of the FTP. That is the yeah. FTP. So that's yeah. probably how. Okay. This is the FTP server, yeah. Right. Wow. At least the password contains special characters, numbers, yeah. and capital letters. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that text file? Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Um, and then. All right, I'm all right. Let, me just, let me just say this, right? Uh -huh. We, and you know, we're looking down on TSDT, and, you know, probably a lot of people as well. You know, in the industry looking on and probably getting a little laugh or two. But at the end of the day, I show your company. I show you a lot of people, companies are doing the same exact thing in Trinidad. Storing things in a text file? Yes. Yeah, I, I wouldn't lie to you. I have some very basic um, accounts on um, stored in a text file. But all of those all of the accounts are cloud accounts that have two-factor authentication. So, yeah. like... If somebody get those passwords, yes, they'll be able to try to log in, but the 2FA will stop because I have the other point the um the key you know the key the um the pin now. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Or three, right? Yeah. Um so yeah. There there people are store things with plain text all the time. But not the FTP account. Not the uh, FTP that, account. That, with, that people doing that. With root? <laughs> like your root your root password can no, if it's a if it's a, a a a client or login, but the root, no, but no, nobody yeah, is to ever do that. They're not supposed to, but I am pretty sure they are free for the who's do that. You know what? Tell me it's on your phone or something. Tell me it's inside like a, a text file on your phone. 
but or yeah, but not on a. I right, put, put it this way: if TSTT doing it, you, you really think TSTT is the only company in China that are doing it? I I agree with you. You know, I know it are people doing it, but not the root password for your Linux server. Like, so you think so? This is as gross incom- incompetence or negligence on TSTT part. Yeah, no, no, for real though. The man yeah. sit down and say, <laughs> yeah, put the root password inside our text file and save it there. Like, you, you can't, you had to tell me that that root password is not the actual root password. That is some password that they have to take and run it through some um, decryptor that will actually change it to the real password. Mm-hmm. That's the only way you get that. Because you had to tell me it's a honeypot or some kind of thing like that. No, no, but, password. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm telling you. That's that my only, that only issue. Um, yeah. Everybody does save things in plain text. I mean, not in plain text. Everything else, everybody else does save stuff on a text file somewhere. Yeah. And that is not uncommon. Yeah, I know I know people have a notebook where they just write the passwords in the notebook. Yeah, that I know people like that too, and I don't blame them in yeah. like that much. But yeah, okay, cool. So watch the, um this spreadsheet file here have things that... um. That kind of the carrier that they own. Let me see how big I could get it. That's so AT and TRC. Yes. Oh, yeah. that's Anguilla, so. Anguilla, Algeria, Aruba. Um, oh, it's like a call history. Three for the month, yeah, like a call history thing, yeah. Daily report with carrier usage, probably for roaming and thing now. Yeah. Yeah, like roaming charges and that, and then a bunch of spreadsheet files, infrastructure files, cloud right. files, cloud. network files, yeah. Oracle host hmm. method of thing logins.txt. <laughs> oh, I know that I am in it. When you see text files, you'll just be like, yeah. 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 CSCD yeah. condensed cyber attackers, no data le- deleted. Of course, we knew that. That was correct. We talked about that last week, but right. Okay, so we got to the end of this article. Yeah. You, so, saw Tat, you saw Tat put something out? No, I didn't see that. That's supposed to yeah. find that link for my answer for me because I want to see what Tata to say.